Hello and welcome back to another chat on the Fooshcast. And since we have more Wings of Silver, more Nerves of Steel, and more Yoing of Joes, we thought it was a perfect time to welcome back the always informative Mr. Brian Flynn of Super 7. Brian, um, it seems like we just bothered you, but uh, you're gracious enough to join us again. How are things going, sir? Things are going good. Things are going good. Thanks for having me, Nick. Hey, uh, we're we're glad to do it. And the year is getting uh, a little long in the tooth, but that doesn't mean uh, things are slowing down because there's all kinds of ultimate stuff going on right now. There's a lot going on, and there's it's going to be a, it's going to be a crazy run up to Chinese New Year. Well, that's uh, that that's good because uh, it's it's more more coolness landing in the hands of everybody. I I, I want to get started right away, but I know yesterday was a was a pretty special important day with uh, Godzilla's birthday. I'm sure I'm sure you guys you're just kind of probably sitting there going like this at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, we might be working on some things. Yeah. Well, come on. Um, of course, we're working on things. Yeah. Just nothing yet. Nothing that we can show you yet. But we're well, working on things. Some 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 silhouettes were were cool, and I, I know that from the beginning, really, the talk was twenty twenty two was going to be the year for it, and that's going to be here before we know it. So exciting! Yeah, it's going to be here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, turn yeah. this off. It's already beeping like eight times. Can you hear this? When it oh beeps? no, that's all right, dear. You got you got lots going on. Absolutely. Well, um, then let's jump right into it. And I think uh, since I, I got to catch up with uh, Kyle about MMPR not long ago. And, and we kind of just walked through, um, you know, each each figure um, on the website. So I'm just going to pull that up. Um, and let's start with Silverhawks then. And see if this goes correctly. All right. There, 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 there is the man. Now, um, we got series two to talk about, but I kind of wanted to check in on series one, too. Um, that's in, in production. Do you know kind of off the top of your head where that's living right now? Where it's living? Well, it's living at the factory. But well, what it's living it's at, at the factory. I guess that was a, a, a piss poor way to say it. How it's, how it's growing, I guess, moving along. <laughs> yeah, it's moving along uh, just fine. So um, I, I don't have any grand things where I can be like, and look at this. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's it's cruising along just fine. Um, right. We're working on it. You're going to get some silver hawks. And it's going to be, everybody's going to be stoked. I know, uh, I know people are excited to uh, see what that final paint deco is going to look like uh, on those hawks, but I'm sure you're going to uh, be bringing that out to us as soon as you can, huh? I, I have samples of things that are painted in the paint. Yeah. But I can't, but they used an existing thing, just like, here's this thing, paint it, but I can't show you the thing gotcha. that it's on. So it's like, oh, that thing I can't show you because that thing's still top secret. <laughs> paint, I'm like, like, could I go and like mask off part of it? And hold it you know? um, so unfortunately, I can't show it to you quite yet. Well, well, how, how are the results looking for you as far as what you were, were people, shooting for? That, that people are going to be, they, they are, they, it looks great. It's going to make everything that you ever wanted it to be. It's going to be nice and shiny. When you turn it this way, it's going to be shiny. When you look at it this way, you can still see it. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's really cool. All right. It's a cool paint. Well, I... to, we have to change the shade for every single one of them because they're all different colors. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I can't wait um, and, uh, to, to see that, but we're here to talk about the pre-orders that are open for Series 2, which are available right now at this very uh, Super 7 website that I'm at right now. And, and I wanted to start it off with um, who I am going to just come out and say is the best Silver Hawk because he is a steel blue cybernetic bird cop spaceman with a guitar weapon, a cowboy hat, and a metal mohawk uh, underneath that, that cowboy hat. So uh, bluegrass, needless to say, I am really excited about this guy. Yeah, and uh, he definitely seems to be so far the most popular figure mm -hmm. in this wave. Um, for, for all the, I, for I all the points I'm sure I just mentioned. <laughs> What's that? For all for all the reasons that you know we just we just ran through with what makes bluegrass bluegrass, right? Well, I think he was yeah you know, he's a very unique character where some of the other characters you could argue are somewhat similar even mm -hmm. though they may look different. He's a very unique character and you know 
when you have that defined personality, you have a lot of people that really like that, that character. Yeah. Well, um, there's a lot going on here uh, in terms of his accessories. I think also compared to the other Silverhawks, since he doesn't have the flight enhancements that really take up, you know, because those have to be represented in, in those figures. Um, there's there's a little bit more that can go on here that, that that's a little bit different. So, um, you know, we'll get to, to, to some of the obvious things here in just a second. But I mean, three different heads and, and all kinds of hands that can accomplish what what seems to look like just about every like convincing guitar picking uh, <laughs> pose you can get. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you can see the guitar pick in that right now in that bottom uh -huh. second. That one right there. Yeah. You know. And got to play and, the hits. And 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 the fingers right there are uh, are, are are perfect to, to do that. That that's that's really fun. Um, one one thing that I was wondering about is is the is the bandana going to be set or is that going to be something that's just going to be removable like other pieces? It's removable. It's is on it? top. All right, cool. And obviously the hat's going to work, um, you know, on all three heads, but um, he's got three heads, but he's also got three versions of, of Sidemen. And, and that brings in, you know, a little bit of, you know, not only the cartoon, but some of the toy pieces too. So um, it, 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 you get a little variety here and that's, that's one past what we've been able to get with the other Hawks up to this point. <laughs> Well, the other Hawks don't necessarily transform into a bass guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of have to have, you know, both instruments and, you know, same thing like that bottom hand there is the bass hand. Uh-huh. As opposed to the pick and the guitar hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, that's, uh, that, that, that's, some, uh, that, that's some attention to detail so he can uh, pluck and thump the, 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 the bass uh, correctly. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't play the bass with the pick. Come no. on, everybody knows that. No, not not at all. But okay, so so that that that's cool. Um, but his 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 regular okay, his guitar is you know his quote unquote weapon, which you know obviously I think everybody was expecting this part to be represented here. But man alive, this uh, musical effect, the musical, is, the music note blast. That that, that that's that. I, it's silly to call an effect piece like maybe my favorite thing of the entire wave that's been shown but this is really rad it's super fun i mean that's the whole point like oh man you know it's the same thing we're like this we need this yeah and uh i i, I hate to say it but seeing those musical effect pieces you know obviously appreciated for bluegrass but it also kind of makes me think of another musical uh based character that's maybe never had a had a figure ever too that uh would would, would look good with something like this too you know <laughs> Just, just leave it. Just put all the breadcrumbs out that you want, right? Yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll just drop them all um, today. But, <laughs> but um, I, 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 you know, we've, we've gotten obviously Quicksilver and, um, and, and Steelheart in the first wave, and we'll get Steel Will here in just a second. But Bluegrass, I mean, we're getting through the primary team pretty quickly. But yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> we generally, same thing, you know, two heroes, two villains mm -hmm. is what we're kind of going for. But there's a lot more to be made from Silverhawks. There's a lot more to be made. Yeah. Um, do you do you kind of look at the approach of Silverhawks much the same as, you know, something like Turtles and Thundercats, where they definitely have, you know, a, a very long um, and, and you know, obscure at times uh, character rosters. I, I think people kind of sell Silverhawks a little bit short with that simply because of the finite nature of the original action figure line. But going back and watching a lot of those episodes, there's a lot of guys to get to. <laughs> there's a lot of characters in Silverhawks and there's a lot. I mean, it, it all will come back down to like, you know, how far down the hole can we go before people go, okay, enough. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot, a lot more room to be had in here. And there's a lot of really cool places to go still. So I think we'll be doing Silverhawks for a while. At least that's my plan. Cool. 
Well, I am I'm definitely looking forward to it. And 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 saying that it is exciting to um, get to the point where uh, we're going to be you know putting the the main team together uh, because joining Bluegrass in Series Two is uh, the beefy boy. <laughs> this this guy um, Steel Will looks uh, pretty massive. Just trying to kind of do that in your mind comparison when you've got Bluegrass who's pretty skinny and then um, he Steel Will's just looking like a beast. He's huge. And, yeah. you know, it, it was interesting, you know, because it, it, it creates all sorts of issues about how you make all these things work and how at the same time, you don't want to all of a sudden make this really big figure, but then he doesn't come with as much stuff. And it doesn't, it, uh, it's, he's just disproportionately large compared to everybody else. Yeah. It's just hilarious. And and that's accentuated by the fact that his uh, faceplate and helmet, you know, he's got the he's got the all American '80s football uh, thing going on here too, right? The slightly Dallas Cowboys color scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess that's true. Absolutely, it, it it is. Well, I mean, then I guess he he and Bluegrass would get along um, as as far as that goes. But the the, the screamer gun too um, is something that I gotta say I. I guess I just wasn't thinking about it, but I never would have expected it either. So get like the closed mouth and the open mouth version of that. And I, I assume the effects, can can any of the other effects travel to, to be worked in with that? I'm not sure if the blast switches between the guns, if they're the same. I don't know if they're the exact same radius. I'd have to check. It's, it's not a bad idea. I don't know if right now the bot. It, it looks like it's a little more narrow in there, mm -hmm. but we'd have to look at what the interior cavity dimension is, but it would make sense if they're similar to the, make it so that they could be swappable. Well, it's, um, it's definitely a fun uh, weapon <laughs> to, to, to include. It's, it's one, I mean, of course you can say Silverhawks, it's, it's, you know. It's the most ridiculous weapon. I, I was going to say Silverhawks in and of itself is fantastical, but um, the, this weapon stands out even, even from that. So um, that, that, that's a lot of fun that, I, I don't know, it kind of counterbalances with a guy who looks, you know, like he's fairly stern and he's going to run right through you, right? So yeah. that's that's that that, that that that's cool. Um, he he has the shoulders too, and and it was I was wondering. So the shoulder, all the shoulders and the arms, in terms of cross compatibility with each other, those all can can switch out so that his regular arms are with the blast shoulders, um, and his flight arms could have the blast shoulders too if you wanted to arrange it that way, right? Exactly, exactly. So you could swap it out and have either or. Um, yeah. And, and, and his color, if I'm remembering correctly, too, um, he matches his sister pretty much exactly, right? They're, they're pretty much the same color, maybe a little different. Yeah. Ever so slightly, but yeah. yeah, they're very, very similar. But it's that much darker sort of metallic -y blue. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, cool. I, you know, like I said, having the various different shapes and sizes um, and, and even the color differentials uh, throughout this team, um, it, it makes them already going to look very, very interesting, even though, you know, the Copper Kid, who we haven't gotten to yet, is really the offsetting color with that. These, these guys are, I, I just can't wait to have them all together um, standing in that. I can't wait for you to have them all interview. together too. <laughs> It's uh that the, they're already shaping up to to look cool and heroic and, and I can't wait. Um, but that said, um, much That's like silly. much like Thundercats with Silverhawks, I am definitely about the bad guys. And <laughs> this uh, series two, I think, with the bad guys really takes a, a a a strong pivot from the bad guys from series one because the armored monster and of course Buzzsaw, those are very like mechanical looking guys. And we went right for you know what what I consider to be kind of the bread and butter design of kind of those old Rankin Bass um, designs with 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 Windhammer. And um, what 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 made him you know next on the list? Because there are a lot of cool bad guys to choose from. I think it, you know it's the same thing. It's like what's what's going to be interesting, and what's what really hasn't been done in a lot of ways. What's going to look the coolest on the show? You know, a lot of it is just and there's not a, a scientific rhyme or reason to it. We all just sit here and talk about which ones we think are cooler. Mm -hmm. And it was just like this one's just. I mean, he's just such a bonkers character with his giant tuning fork yeah. and everything. It's just like. 
I mean, it's the same thing. A lot Silverhawks is re preposterously ridiculous in lots of ways. And it's like, no, no, they went all the way there. And yeah. it's like, no, 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 tuning fork. Yeah, tuning fork. T um, tuning fork to cause weather events in outer space um none none nonetheless right so the 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 kind of wind the lightning and and the, the this rocky effect these their snow effect rather these all right, fit yeah. on the end of the actual tuning fork itself right yeah the ice blast kind of thing yeah yeah well that's cool now i i, I went when looking at this um you know I, I i couldn't tell really by the description so i wanted to ask his his tunic i guess you would call it um on the figure looks like it's sculpted plastic it notes that in the um, accessories it's going to be cloth is it just going to be one or the other is it going to have both it's just going to be soft goods soft just goods. Be soft okay goods. okay yeah. okay cool and the belt that, will be obviously plastic yeah there's there, there's i'm sure there's a lot of movement hiding under there that would definitely be hard to get in the um plastic tunic that way so uh makes sense cool well he's um he's one of my favorite he, he and he and hardware um i think and uh hardware kind of goes back i think to his you know second cousin of slide uh type of thing looking to they're they're two of my favorite uh uh bad guys from the show so i was really excited to to see him in all of his kind of sickly minty green color <laughs> It's a bad guy. We'll make him mint green. <laughs> perfect, perfect, and give him the tuning fork. I, I, I adore it. So, that's that's really cool. Now, I, I I'm gonna say that while it shouldn't be unexpected to have the support of the main bad guy coming out strong, um, I was pretty surprised to see the pre-transform version of Monstar come as quickly. Um, as he is, can uh, any any you know thoughts put to why you guys decided to you know essentially hit us with the armor right out of the gate and then turn right to what I actually probably have to say is my preferred look for him? I think it was you know the armored was the one that we liked the most mm -hmm. and felt like we really wanted to get out there, but at the same time, lots of other people prefer the other monster. He's still sort of the main character. It's mm -hmm. a lot. You know, it's a, a lot of the show is about Monstar and moving back and forth. So we were just like, you know, like, why are we going to wait to bring out Monstar again? Like, yeah. Let's just get right to it. And then that that's what, as we'll talk, I'm sure here in a minute, that's what led into the discussion about the throne. Yeah. As well, yeah. But, you know, uh, I mean, he's also just like, look at that armor, man. He's with the 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 dark red with the black and the little red accents. Yeah, I, I, I've got to tell you, I, you know, I've, I've watched the show countless times and I've, you know, known and had presence of mind of the character for almost my entire life. But the colors and almost like that, almost like blood red into black, um, that kind of reminds me of like the old Bram Stoker's Dracula um, armor at Tula. But I, I, I guess I've never picked up or noticed on the show all these like subtleties of blending in um, one one to the next. And it just makes him look even cooler than I even, you know, thought of him before. Well, the, the crazy part about him is that, like literally you look at that armor and everything and you mm -hmm. go, if you take the head off and you put like a diver head on it or later common Rider stuff, yeah. it's all in that same sort of zone real quick. And you're like, oh, wow. Like this was animated in Japan and they were looking at stuff, but it's like that it it fits in really early with that sort of like, okay, what if it's this sort of, sort of like, you know, organic -y armor. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what what phase of animation you want to call that where all of a sudden everybody was wearing like organic armor. Uh-huh. But it, it definitely fits in with all of that. Uh well, it's 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 a nice contrast to the hawks themselves too, because they're very cybernetic and, and like you said, this has a very organic quality to it. And 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 the the way that it's arranged is arranged is actually interesting. And I don't know from an engineering standpoint or a figure build standpoint, um, some of the challenges or or a unique way to put this together, but it almost looks like the 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 ab piece of the armor um, comes down over the, the the furry part. Am I seeing that correctly? Or are those two just meeting each other right there at at, at that line? We're, they're meeting each other there for articulation's sake. Mm -hmm. um, 
we're trying to build it so that it looks like it's diving back in there. Yep. But there, that's that is going to be you know articulation there at okay. the waist. Okay. You'll get it up obviously at the chest as well, but yep. you'll get it there at the waist. Okay. Okay. Cool. And um, you know, for for me to the his, his his heads and the way that he looked um this way and and you know that lead in and the animation when he's starting to transform this head up here just literally like screams that um and, and i noticed the the star on the eye patch is a little bit different color here is this uh maybe some glow in the dark action or something going on here right now it's all paint glow in the dark would be nice glow in the dark paint just doesn't work well you have to kind of yeah. cast it in glow in the dark and then paint everything else gotcha so I, right now it's just spec as paint well, it I, I I like the the detail of it definitely being a different color um, than than the other two. And while these two heads are are really fun, um, I mean this is going to be my go to <laughs> for sure uh, uh, up here. So yeah, yeah. So so I I'm really excited to. I, I mean obviously the armored version of Monstar is 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 insane, and I know he's going to be absolutely you know ginormous a beast. He's stupid tall. Yeah, yeah, but um, you know, he has the the, the pre transformation um, version has a lot of interesting features. But to what you were talking about before, that also leads us to kind of that what we're calling like that that variable fifth skew that we kind of talked about the last time um, when we talked about the Mousers with uh, Turtle Series Six and, and Monstar's Throne. So. Um, what, what was it just saying? I, I saw that it had this, then there was a picture of, you know, Monstar pre-transformation on there. There's also a picture mm -hmm. that should be on there of Monstar post-transformation to show he fits on there as well. Um, I think that might be in... The individual SKU. In the individual. One. Let's see here. I, I, I've seen that picture that you're, you're talking oh, okay. about. It's but... always... There's 800 <laughs> pictures. Which one are we talking about? Can can never can never find the one uh, that that you need when you're you're looking for it. But I, I I've seen that picture out there as well. Um, that that both versions can fit on there. Was was the decision to go with this just kind of based off of the fact that you were going to do um the pre transformation monster in this uh, assortment, or was it kind of the other way around? Or or let, let let's talk about you know where this type of skew comes in, right? Well, th this skew wasn't really premeditated. Mm -hmm. um, we were just talking about it afterwards, like we were making it. And what where we talked about was, at one point we were talking about Snake Mountain. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, the biggest request that we got other than Snake Mountains was people emailing me saying, can I just buy the Bone Throne? Yeah. Can I just buy the Bone Throne. I just want to pose Skeletor in my Bone Throne. Well, you know, we're just getting started with Silverhawks. We're not making anything crazy. Cockhaven or anything like that, right? <laughs> we're not going down that road right now. Like, we're just making this. But I was like, we, we talked about it. We're like, in that same vernacular, it's like, I think there's some collectors, not all, but mm -hmm. there's some collectors that would really like a display piece to go with this. And then we're like, the transformation chair is really cool because it can work with either pre-transformation monster or post-transformation monster yeah and we we're just like well let's make a fifth skew and make this the chair and then but we don't need to make it as part of like the wave necessarily like, right here's the four figures if you're just collecting the figures you just need to collect the figures you don't have to buy it but if you're that person that wants that extra display piece Let's make that display piece, not unlike Skeletor's Bone Throne, so that you can have it on your shelf. And if you're into it, great. And if you're not, it's also okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're not doing it for everything by any means. But, you know, there's been a, after the Mousers were in a similar thing as we talked about before, which is like, lots of people are asking about these things. I mean, it's cool, but it, you don't have to have it. Like, mm -hmm. how do we start giving you a little more than just the figures? but make it so that you don't feel like we're trying to, I don't know, ask you to buy even more stuff. It's, it's trying to make it very much feel like it's a, hey, if you like that, you can get it and it's cool. But if you don't, it's also okay. 
Yeah, you don't have to buy it to get this monster, right? Yeah, exactly. Like if we did that, I think that then that's kind of a, a jerk move. Plus, it's gigantic, and <laughs> the tool <laughs> on it's well, well, like the well, same thing. It's like at a certain point, it's like might as well make another figure. Right. And, and I, I, you know, the, the, the picture that kind of made me chuckle was seeing it in the box, right? Because obviously it's got to come in, in a box, but, um, you know, with the size that this is looking, that's going to be a, you know, a, a pretty big box. Is this just, it, it, are, are you guys going for like a big solid hunk of plastic? Is there going to be any, you know, um, special things that are, I guess, are maybe hard to, to see in, in, in the render version of it or, or how, 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 I mean, it, anything else? <laughs> The size of it is big enough that we have to make multiple pieces, you know, so it can all come mm -hmm. together. It, you know, it's it's supposed to feel like just, you know, a big his big throne. Yeah, and um, and be a nice solid piece. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we haven't added like you know martini mixers or anything. Like <laughs> that, so um, a, a little drawer for extra eye patches or anything like that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, this is where. This is where he keeps his hidden stash of Jolly Ranchers. You know, <laughs> he strikes me as a Jolly Rancher kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, on, only cherries, only yeah. cherry red. Right, uh, right, right. No, I mean it, it. It like I said, it's very much a display accessory. Yep. I can only call it that. Um, and it's for that kind of collector. It doesn't need to be for everybody. And it was. I'm, I'm saying it for the third time, but it was just like, yeah, it was like, okay, if we wanted to give you Skeletor's Bone Throne for Silverhawks, this is what it would be. Yeah. And then, we, and then he, on our side, we're like, and either people will buy it or they won't. We yeah. have no idea. Well, I, I, I think that as, because I, you know, you mentioned the picture, of course, that I can't can't find to pull up right now i i think the one that really put i a lot of people over was seeing the wave one monster um sitting in this to kind of give everybody a, a feel for just how massive um this, this is going to be in the cross compatibility of it so i i think that was definitely a smart move to to show that off as well yeah well it has to fit both of them so yeah. you know in the cartoon they can easily draw it down or draw it up or make yeah. you know and then on our end we're like okay now we got to make this work for both of them and <laughs> <laughs> and, and no assembly required. This isn't an Ikea throne, right? It's all just going to come right there. No, that, would, that, that would be like T-H-R-O umlaut, like E-N. <laughs> with, with the frustrated little man standing next to it. because uh, Yeah, yeah. With, with the, him, him holding the telephone. <laughs> Colin, Colin C.S. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, th this, this, this is definitely a... a fun piece and i like the you know analogy to the bone, bone throne because it's it, it's perfect and you know i have that sitting over there and it's you, you can't not pose a skeletor um in there so monstar is def one of them at least is definitely going to be um sitting in the throne silverhawk series two is pre-order is open now it's going to run pretty much through the end of the month uh november 29th i think is the day um yeah right there uh so um i'm i'm just excited to be you know building out uh this this world and i've got i've got the spot on the shelf all ready for them so let's <laughs> let, let's keep it rolling let's 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 get them in your hands yeah yeah absolutely okay well then moving along to the pre-order that just opened this week um, was another big one uh, for a lot of people. And, and it's G.I. Joe. And um, I, I've got to say that for nostalgia purposes, I think I've got more of a um, attachment to Silverhawks. But seeing this wave um, of power couples in, in the G.I. Joe, in the G.I. Yep. Joe world, um, this is a really, really... Um, strong wave and interesting one because we're getting um, not only you know some very identifiable anchor characters, but first females um, for the for the Joe line too. Yeah, obviously, you know, in in GI Joe, you know, there, compared to everything else, there's far more female characters than mm -hmm. in other lines, um, and I and you know they're much more significant. They weren't really sort of window dressing as much. Right. Uh, so uh, I, it doesn't make me nervous having them in here. I was just like, of course. And then we were yeah. just sort of talking about it, like 
how do you go about, where do you go? And I was like, it would be kind of funny if we made it like couples dance and it's like Destro and Baroness and Flint yeah. and Lady J. And then we're like, actually, yeah, that would be pretty cool. So Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Flint, um, Flint was part of the initial tease that went down um, last week. So, so let's start, let, let's start with him. Um, I can grab, I can grab paint masters. Hold on. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, that is, that is great. Hold on. Almost like I came prepared. Um, yeah. Well, like, why didn't you put them at least by the screen, dude? <laughs> Four at a time here. Well, well, that that brings an interesting point because I, I see people sometimes sometimes ask. It's like usually you guys have paint masters and things. And let me let me stop sharing here so we can uh, focus in on on you there. Yeah, there there is. There is the paint master of Flint. Now, I, I would say that the paint masters come along a little bit later, but in order to get all like the promotional things and whatnot going, that's typically why some of these have to be initially led with the renders, right? Uh, I mean, it, it's sort of, there's like, there's like eight different reasons at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to do these one to make, we do the outputs and the paint masters to make sure that they're right on our end before right. we send them to the factory. We send a set to the factory to match for production. And then we have a set here to match so that we look at when they send back, like, what did we send them? What are we matching to? Right. And on the flip side, you know, we used to use the paint masters for all the photography, but the reality is uh, approvals and everything else take so much longer than they used to mm -hmm. that we're typically doing them in render instead because we can get that that out faster than right. this because like the paint master literally it's like okay say say sculpt and paint are done and we're yep. approved the digital level and i go okay we need to make a set well that might take another month right and so it's like we lose a month in there and it's like we can't afford to lose that time yeah and when we digitally paint them, we can also send them to the factory along with these as like digital paints too. We're saying, this is how it looks because we 3D and made it. So we can get going a little faster, but you know, you still have to do the physical part as well. But it, it, it's sort of like overlapping, overlapping reasons because, you know, with a lot of times with the licensors, they'll want to see it digitally first. Mm -hmm. then you have to send them photos of a physical so they can show that you can actually replicate what you did digitally. Right. So it becomes all these steps and all the other steps outside of us sort of doing this are what has moved us and pretty much everybody else to like, oh, all your promo and marketing materials because of the lead times in getting those approved mm -hmm. now have to be done with renders versus physical toys. Right. Well, um, the, the, the output uh, is, is looking great. And Flint comes with three different heads. And one of them looks like it ha you have the option. The, the head that you have on there now, the beret is not removable, right? No. But the kind of more just happy or, I guess, neutral face does have the removable beret, right? Yeah, and that's almost, I, I believe we went with the non-beret head I'm trying to remember, but there is a spot in the comics too mm -hmm. where he's not wearing the beret, and it's yeah. like, okay, we'll we'll pull it off of that. Well, that that, that that's something, and you know, I, I don't know if we discussed it when we talked about series one, and and because that was, you know, there was a lot to talk about when it was initially announced. But seeing things like that head um, that, that's comic inspired, and I know Baroness has a couple of comic inspired things, and and Destro yeah. pulls a little something from the the vintage toys too. You guys um, able to broaden out a little bit as far as the the sources for some of the stuff goes, and it's not just always going to strictly be based off of like the Sunbow or Geek cartoons, right? I think, you know, obviously what's driving the line is the cartoons. Mm -hmm. But when you start to get into swappable parts, accessories, a lot of time there's significant accessories or looks that come from other places. Mm -hmm. And then we pull them in on top of it, but still the driving aesthetic is going to be the toy. So it's like, I'm not, I mean, I mean the cartoon. So I'm not trying to make this look like what's happening, you know, at the toy level. 
Right. And that's right. a little bit like almost a little bit more in what's happening in the classified world. Mm -hmm. Like this is supposed to look like the cartoon. Now there may be other things inspired by it, but then they're run through that cartoon filter to be appropriate. Right. Right. Well, um, you know, Flint, I've always kind of taken him as being more of, you know, a stoic guy um but he comes <laughs> two two of his accessories just are, are are awesome and they kind of make me crack up because he comes with the cobra commander to deliver the state of the empire address tonight um newspaper which is great and then also what i've seen as fertile ground for memes in the past is is the shovel um so that that's where i take that from but help 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 remind me and i think maybe some others um e exactly where the shovel comes into place because i think isn't he aren't he and lady j like using a a, a metal detector or something and they're looking for something in the cartoon with that is that what it was is that i mean but the shovel is an interesting thing because the shovel goes through all of gi joe history too because uh -huh. when you go back to the 12 inches it was like here's all your accessory packs and it's like here's your rucksack and this and that and a shovel yeah you know and it's like there's always a shovel and so with flint and with those sort of moments around the way we're like no flint needs the shovel yeah so uh, it, it, you know, it's not a hundred percent like, oh, here's the moment here. You know, right. it's definitely a deep cut, but it's a bit of an homage to the old toys as well as the, you know, that, that's that moment you're talking about and stuff. And we're like, all right, cool. We'll give them a shovel. Cool. Well, I can see um, in, in, in what you brought up as far as the actual physical prototype, as well as the render itself, that um, he does have a bit of an ab crunch. Do, do the Joe figures, um, because it's something that I talked to Kyle about with MMPR, do they have that kind of seated um, partial ball at the hips too, or are they just a straight twist at the hips? Uh, these are resin. I believe, I believe it depends on the character, honestly. Okay. Some of the character designs don't lend themselves to having that rocker ball as well. Like mm -hmm. uh, we can't really do it with Destro because of his luxurious collar. And his deep, deep, deep V. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. Like his nightclub outfit. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I can't remember specifically, like I think he has a bit of a rocker that sits inside of his waist. Mm -hmm. I know Lady J and Baroness do, but I don't think Destro does. I think Destro is okay. twist only. Okay, that 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 makes sense. Well, you you mentioned Lady J, and I think she's probably the next perfect uh, spot to go to since you know she and Flint. Uh, go together as well. And, and I'll tell you, again, I'm all about the bad guys um, with Joe, but man, uh, I, I think Lady J is my favorite figure that you guys have shown off so far. Um, she looks absolutely fantastic. She does. The Lady J really, not that the others didn't, but Lady J turned out really, really great. Mm-hmm. Um, and and one of the I, I think the thing that strikes me the most obviously is the is the likeness in the face with on the renders with you know the paintwork and whatnot and what we're kind of trying what we're seeing here now when you guys approach that kind of at a um, production level since these are you know based off of cartoons right and, and painted cells um, is, is it important to are, are there important steps or whatnot that you go through in terms of the plastic that's used or the decision to paint faces or 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 that when you're going through some of these likenesses because Duke Duke was you know uh, a guy that has a face that needs to be dealt with in series one but everybody else kind of doesn't but series right. two has got a lot of that going on right yeah, and we're doing, you know, there's a lot more and more stuff that we're doing across likeness more and more. And, um, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not that we haven't been doing faces. It's just that they weren't human faces, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I feel if, if the question is like, are we going to be able to nail that in production? Yes, we're going yeah. to be able to nail it in production. <laughs> good, good. Well, that's that. I mean, like I said, all, all all of them are looking, you know, just great from this. But her 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 likeness is what really caught me, and her accessories are a lot of fun too because you've got she's the, got so many accessories. It's yeah, really that that one javelin stick or whatever it, it's actually called with so many swappable points on it. <laughs> Yeah, because as you, it's like every episode, it's like, oh, different, every, every uh -huh. episode is something new. So it was like, all right, well, we got to have that one and we uh -huh. got to have, have that one and we have that one. Oh. And, yeah. and, and I love because it's appropriate for her, but now it's kind of, you know, treating it as a product of the time that it was in the, the big 
on the shoulder camcorder that was like, hey, it's 1987 on Christmas morning and dad's filming everybody type of uh, giant giant camcorder that she comes with with that. I, I think that's a really nice touch um, as an accessory as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying, I'm like looking over here, like, here, hold on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That is, that is, this is, that, that, that's the, that's the timestamp on there that I absolutely love. <laughs> like, you can't see it in here. It's just in black. So I have to yeah. put it in front of my face. Here, yeah, there, the, there, my there, shiny there. forehead <laughs> will show you. Yeah, I've got plenty of billboard space uh, for doing stuff like that. So I, I, I feel that. Well, um, I'm, I'm really excited um, for her uh, and, and just overall um, because, I, I don't know, something, something about this one just, just clicks perfectly for me. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see her and Flint arriving at the same time. Yeah, we, we definitely wanted to bring some of the girls in earlier with G.I. Joe, for sure. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of the other one who is probably, you know, like my favorite one, one, one B instead of, you know, one A on there is uh, Baroness. And I think much like your, the decision with Snake Eyes in Wave One, you're kind of going off of that uh, original costume for her. Yes, right? yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. This is, you know, mass device and everything else. This is the first Baroness, right? Uh, the first and, of many. Well, and and that that's what I was going to say. I, I think you know, whenever whenever somebody sees something, they automatically think of something that it's not. But um, I'm, I've been saying this absolutely does not rule out um you know the the other versions of baroness down the line no no I, but it's the same thing it's like if we're starting here like that is the first baroness that's where mm -hmm. you start you know if it was star wars this is luke you know with the the you know farm boy farm outfit. boy yeah that's you know, you, yeah. know you can get x-wing pilot later yeah exactly um her her expressions kill me i love the half smirk on the one the head yeah, yeah, that, that 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 to me is just perfect, um, and 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 I feel that I I know that face. I, I think I catch myself making a a face like that a lot. But the glasses on these guy on on the Baroness heads, um, whether they're the green ones or the round black ones, have have what what's what what are what? How are you guys approaching you know executing those? Because obviously they look tremendous here, but in production, are they going to be like thin plastic or, or yeah, they'll be super, I mean, even then, even here, like I can't, well, as the arm falls off, <laughs> you know, um, even here, you know, we, we can't sheet good that's thin enough to make them right there for the samples. Right. But when we inject it, it'll be fine. It'll be the same thing. It's like you inject it in clear green and then mm -hmm. you paint in all the black and then you have you know, the green glasses, you have the round glasses yeah, and everything. And then, you know, you get into the comic book craziness. Yeah. 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 And now the glasses themselves, I imagine, because they, they seem like they're going to be so small, obviously those are going to be permanently affixed to each head. Correct. Yeah. They glue in. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, and then the, the, the gas mask one is uh, fantastic too, because that, that's the one that nobody, nobody, no, nobody saw coming, but it's like, if you think about it, well, she should have that. Well, it's just funny because everybody's just like, well, you know, with Baroness, there's definitely a, uh, a thing where most everybody's like, okay, which sexy sultry look are we getting from Baroness this mm -hmm. week? And it's like, gas mask. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's not what I asked for. I was not asking for gas mask, Baroness. Oh, I think there are probably some people out there that were definitely asking for that version of Baroness. There very well may be. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't the first one on the list, but there may be a lot of people that were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, Baroness is really interesting because when you really, really start going through the shows, I mean, there's so many different ways that she shows up. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, we've been talking about Dr. Juanita Hooper for a while. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. that's, yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely there. And they've got like the, the ball gown versions of them and everything. There's just, there's I just mean, all at, at one point, it's, it's Baroness in a bikini, which is like, all yeah. right, and, all right, guys. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. But un unlike Snake Eyes, who, you know, wears a mask and uh, the coloring and the details of that is appropriate and specific to the costume that he's wearing, um, you know, we're not talking about what could be in the future, but um, 
I, I see a large, a, a wide array of Baroness likenesses that can be, you know, maybe shared and swapped between various versions for sure. Like Michelangelo from series six, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think, you know, it's, it's not to say that, you know, to say that we wouldn't do a black outfit Baroness would be like, of course, we're going to make a black outfit Baroness, but yeah. that's not where we're starting. Right. Like, is that wave four? Is that wave five? Is that wave six? I don't, I don't know. But we will get to black outfit Baroness for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I, I like the continuity um, between like her and Snake Eyes, as you said. I mean, we're starting the line. And, and these are the right places um, to, to start. Um, but, you know, to finish off the theme of the, the power couples, uh, Destro is um, accompanying her and uh, his, his alternate heads are, they're, they're bonkers too for a lot of different reasons. But um, this is, this to me, I, I think a lot of arguments can be made. Oh, when you picture the iconic versions of some of these characters in your mind eye, mind's eye, it splits between old toy and cartoon, but I think it's pretty much unanimous that this is Destro when, when people oh, yeah. think about Destro, right? Yes. Oh, yes. I can't do a, a voice that deep. Yeah. Like <laughs> yes, Destro. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, and then this was the toughest one to figure out because, like, what do you do about this collar? Because if you don't, if you want to make it a separate piece, that so he can flex, then it has to not connect and then it bends and it does weird stuff and it pops off. It's like, yeah. it's all sorts of problematic. Um, yeah. It looks good in 2D. It's a little tougher in 3D. Right. But um, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Like, you know, same thing. We were like, when he gets the lava on his face, he uses the sander to clean it off. At first it was just a piece of like lava, uh -huh. like a rubber piece that you could just put on the head. And I was like, now like just attach it to a head like you pop on the the lava covered head yeah yeah um well that 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 one's amazing i love the laughing one um personally i i, I think that one uh is is just is is about as perfect as far as the the likeness captured goes now um destro of course kind of comes with the same question as like the silver hawks do when you see his head um what what are, what are you guys planning as far as finish for that chrome dome of his well i mean you just said it's, it's going to be a nice silver it, yeah, it'll be yeah. a little bit it won't be full bling silver mm -hmm. it, we're going to muddy it up a little bit just because it, it needs a little like even in here like where we've gone in with this like I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little hint of black to that silver. Yep, yep. And it, it makes all the difference in the world. It just makes it that much more menacing. Yeah. Like, you know, he's supposed to be looking down on you like, I don't like you, kid. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that air of arrogance uh, to him, yes. um, it, it, it fits well. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's a really fun wave, and... Um, you know, speaking towards the the larger line, we're, we've definitely gotten some heavy hitters um, right out right out of the gate. Is this you know systematically how you're kind of trying to establish the you know the the, the core world first and then build on? Because I'll be honest with you, some of the best offerings that you guys do, I think, across lines are the the you know WTF choices as far as characters go, and we haven't really gotten into that with Joe yet. Yeah, but we aren't that far down the well yet. You yeah. know, this is just wave two. I think, right. you know, in, in G.I. Joe, unlike other, like in Silverhawks, you'd be like, oh, here's the main five characters. You mm -hmm. know, Thundercats, like here's the main four characters, whatever. You know, when you get to G.I. Joe, it's like, who are the main characters? Well, it's like, oh, well, the, with Joes, it's like, well, there's like a dozen Joes. Right. You know, you have the the sort of like, you know, Flint, Duke, Snake Eyes that sort of rise to the top, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it's like whether it is Doc or, you know, Roadblock shipwreck. or Blood or Shipwreck, like yeah. e everybody's in every episode. Like, you know, they're all in there. And the same thing when you start, when you talk about Cobra, it's pretty much Destro Baroness and Cobra Commander. But then you get into like, well, Zartan's not that far behind. Zaymot and Tomax aren't that far behind. Like, yeah. like there's just lots of main characters or A and A minus characters where, well, a lot of other lines, it's sort of like, 
you know, like, you know, if you go back to even masters, it's like, yeah, you have He-Man, but then it's a, it's a, it's a jump down to Tila man at arms and everybody or Skeletor. And then it's a jump down to beast man and merman. Yeah. And then from there, it's an even bigger jump down to sort of the next group. It's like, um, how people perceive Joe is that there's a pretty wide swath of people at the top. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of people to get to before we get into the really weird stuff. Yeah. But there's also some really weird stuff to get into. <laughs> well, I will, um, I will try not to be too bothersome about uh, chuckles until um, he arrives, but my, my ridiculous story as to why he's my favorite Joe is probably best served for a, a, a different time, but I'll be, I'll be looking forward to uh, him as well. But this is, this is a really, really um, strong, I, 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 I mean, I love wave one, but I think I've, I love this wave even more and they are available now and are going to be until what the third of December, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. Available now until December. And well, speaking yeah, of... I, I um, really like this wave too. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of I wave like one, um, things going going well as far as production, as far as that goes, because I mean, that was right around the same time as Silverhawks series one too. I mean, it makes sense there. Yep. Series two are coming you now. Know, so. All that stuff sort of cruising along. It's sort of like, you know, you get into this period in the middle where it's like lots of work is going on but you don't really have a lot to show for it. Then all yeah. of a sudden it's like, duh, 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 and then everything yeah. catches up once you get through tooling and through test shots and everything. So, okay. Okay, cool. Well, that, I, I, I think that's a, the, the perfect way to kind of segue into something that I always like to talk about um, when we have a chance to chat and that's um, some shipping update yeah. when, um when's when's my stuff going to show up well I, I mean that's 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 the that's the end game um right so uh you have uh, an update about um something specific I have, some, I, have, I have some stuff here so the next 60 days are the days of thundercats yeah so uh obviously most everybody should have wave three minus chitara in their hands at this point um yep. this is was supposed to be final pack out on wave four but oh. uh, one of them is incorrect so it's not final pack out but wave four is pretty much done and is going to be shipping out of the factory i think in three weeks three weeks that, that i think that's ahead of schedule than what you said um in your shipping update from before I, it might be first week of december um but that would be four weeks if it's first week of december but three or four weeks um we're going to have to see, they've got to remake the interior blister for one of these. That might cause it to slow down a little bit, but so wave four is we're gonna, out ready to go. We're going to have those three core mutants ready to go. That's my favorite group. Um, have Linkso here. Yeah. It's all right. Linkso, and then... Um, Umra is the one that has the incorrect interior blister. Oh, okay. Because as you will notice, he is missing a head. Ah, the the large head, right, for ever-living Mumra. Right. So uh, they've got to redo the interior blister of that. The parts are probably all done, but they've got to redo the blister and repack it all. Yeah. So well, the, uh, we have, it's like missing third head. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that's exciting. The the soft goods robe on him looks great, though, and it's first time ever for Pumra, so that's that's really cool. And then this thing, which is slice level heavy, that this is my guy for Series Snowman Four right here. Mountain. Yeah, wow, he's almost as wide as the, he's almost as wide as the box. Oh, it's ridiculous, and it's yeah. like it's heavy. Uh, like, it, it's crazy. But so so these are coming out. Like I said, three-ish weeks might slip to the first week of December. Then the wave one, they the factory ended up switching wave one and wave two. I have no idea why, but this is ongoing issues. Uh, but then wave one ships out the first week of December, and wave two is toward the end of December. All right. So, so wave three is in people's hands now. And then in the next 60 days, you get wave four, wave one reorders, and wave two. And right. so within the next 60 days, we will have, you know, a dozen Thundercats, no, 10 Thundercats come out of the factory. Wow. 
Well, 10, 10 coming out of the factory and uh, and then uh, maybe a and then and then we do the shipping dance, which is like yeah. how long is it going to take? Like pre pre all this other stuff, it used to be twenty four days on the water, clockwork. Yeah. Now it's sixty days. Average is seventy five days. Some days is ninety days. Like I have no idea when it's going to actually physically get here, but well, it'll be out of the factory. It'll well, a, a good example of that was, is that I think the last time that we talked, it was like the day before or, or the day after uh, Turtles Series 4 um, was, was, was shipping. I, I assume they're still kind of en route in terms of their, their trek across uh, the sea at, at this point. Half of them are here, half of them aren't. Oh, wow. So it's, it's the same thing, like Turtles... Turtles, I, uh, I'm not sure when that second half is going to be here exactly. I, don't, I didn't, I know that right now NJPW Wave 2 is what they're sh we're shipping out of the warehouse right now. Yep. Um, but yeah, we've got half, we've had half of them for like two weeks. I don't wow. know when the other half are going to show up. Okay. As soon as they show up, we can start shipping out turtles. But, you know, it's the same thing. It's like this funny thing depending on different factories and different lines like certain things like turtles like i mean turtles three just showed up and yeah. turtles four is right here like like it's moving fast um for some reason like god that one and two on thundercats just were just brutal it's that that that's gonna be that's gonna be a moment though once uh... you're gonna be like i i did I order all these Thundercats? <laughs> but 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 that'll be that'll be an embarrassment of riches because those will be arriving. You know, some of them maybe right after we uh, maybe have another another, another pre order coming up soon too. Right? Maybe. Yeah. I, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe. Well, um, that, that that that's the thing. I mean, we're we're lumbering towards the end of 2021, but it looks like there's still quite a bit to. Uh, to, to get out there and get done before we yeah hit it, it, it unfortunately is all kind of collapsed in on November but there's a couple really great things in November obviously we just put up GI Joe mm -hmm. last week was Silverhawks um, but there's two more in November which is all kind of crazy it's a little piled up I don't love the timing of it all like that yeah. I'd like to put a little more space between it but you know, that's the big ones. There's going to be a bunch this month and then it's going to be a pretty low key December. December. Um, that, that's, that, 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 that's good. Cause December is one of those months, uh, anyway, right. Where the, the save the last minute, you know, Christmas shopping for this year, uh, for December. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but the waves that we've got coming out are just, they're so cool. They're yeah. so cool. Yeah. Um, um even for me, I'm just like, oh man, uh, and I hate to sound like that, but it's like, man, we're killing it on these. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I, you know, I'm the the, the Silverhawks and Joes. Like I said, those those built, you know, they're 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 like the turtles. I, I mean, subsequent series, it's like, when is it going to get to the point where I'm not saying I like this series better than the last one uh, that they showed? Because it seems like I say that with turtles um, every time too. And, and, you know, I'm super like series two for Joe and Silverhawks, man. Ooh, those, both of those just speak to me. So I, I can't wait to see it, uh, you know, even escalate from there. Yeah. Escalate makes it sound negative, but yeah, it's oh, just okay. going to keep building on it and just having fun with it and you know i i genuinely believe because we've seen it happen before that when all these things land and they're in people's hands that you're going to see so many more people just like wait what did i miss yeah because we run into that every other pre-order which is like oh hey you know cool we made these and then once they all show up people are like oh these are really cool where do i get them and you're like i kind of can't yeah yeah and, uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with that story necessarily or that well, anecdote. Well, it's, but, um, but it, yeah, it, but I guess what, what it is, is that as excited as I am about Joe and people are really receptive to it right now. Mm -hmm. I think when they land and people have them in their hands, it's going to kick up a notch. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, we, we've seen that with, with everything and, and you guys have gone back to the well on some things for Thundercats, as you mentioned, but, but turtles as well, um, because some of those characters, you know, it's like, gosh, you can't really, you, you can't really come in a little bit later and not have, you know, your, your Duke or your Cobra commander or things like that. So I, 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 I get it. And that's why I think that's why we try hard to get, get all that out there to people as much as possible when it's, when it's happening, because it, it, it sucks to be late sometimes. <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely when you're late, it can be expensive. Yeah. And that's not my goal. Right. You know, but at the same time, I can't, magically warehouse a whole bunch of stuff for things people may or may not want later right right absolutely okay well um still a lot to look forward to um for yeah let's see. i mean what else is coming out of the factory let's see njpw shipping this week it's here it's done it's shipping uh major podcast guys ship on the 10th okay. so they're right around the corner and then Doc and Carl have actually accelerated and they're coming out like I think a week or two after that. So all those come out. Um, Conan and Disney maybe. I think they were on your last update too for being right around this time. Yeah, I think I think Conan is soon. I think is Disney this month or next month? I can't remember on Disney because it's it's going smoothly, so I haven't had to, you know, it's not right. like, hey, they're missing a head. Cl cl closed mouths don't need to be fed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I think it's going along just fine, yeah. you know. Um, no, I, there's going to be a lot of ultimates that come out of the factory and a lot of stuff that gets shipped very, very soon, which is cool because, I, yeah. you know, there's definitely plenty of people who are like, When's this stuff going to show up? And it's like, it's showing up. Trust me. I just got to wait for it to show up on a boat. Right. Left and factory. And, and getting on that boat is important because we are rumbling towards CNY too. So I'm sure you guys are trying to uh, get as much in ahead of that at this point. Everybody, everybody is. Everybody is. Um, yeah. Most of this stuff is this year. So, you know, January is the sort of the, the catch month mm -hmm. for everybody. And then, and then nothing gets done in February. Half of what you needed to get done is going to get done in March. In April, you should be more or less back to capacity, back to full yeah. production. Maybe. Yeah. Well, May for sure, but April yeah. is I see. Well, well, speaking of February, are you guys um, planning on being in person for New York Toy Fair this year? Yes, we will All be right. in person for New York Toy Fair as long as it, assuming it still happens, which I right. think it will. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm with you. That's it, it's funny because we're, I'm, I'm actually taking a trip later this month, but the last plane trip I took was to Toy Fair 2020. So it's uh, going to be essentially arriving at two years in, in between. And it's because I, I think Toy Fair is going to be the next trip after this one. So it's just, it's kind of weird how those <laughs> earmark yeah, I, the, where, where we're at in the world. <laughs> same thing. It's, it's the last plane trip I took. Yeah. Um, you know, because we went to Toy Fair 2020 and we're all like, came back and we're like, oh man, all this crazy stuff's about to happen. And then we got here and like a week later, you Boom. know, it was like, oh, there's this thing COVID. And a week later, it was like, no, at least here in California, it was like, we were shut down by March. Yeah. Like within two or three weeks of Toy Fair, it was like, no one's in the office. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's crazy. It's been that long. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't, but I also haven't had the need to fly. Like, where am I going to go? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't have urgent business in Des Moines. I can't go to the factories in China or Vietnam. Right. Or Japan. So uh, there's, you know, there's no place to go. Is, is there anything changing um, or, or updating as far as, you know, the, the, the travel to places like factories or whatnot, or is that pretty much still exactly where it has been? It's where it has been. There's rumors that after Chinese New Year, they're going to open up a little bit to travel, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which it, whenever it happens, it's going to be amazing because so part of what takes so long right now is the fact that we can't, you know, as you get down into like the last 20% of dialing these figures in, you know, you go in person and just sit there for three or four days. Yeah. It's like, okay, change this paint to this. Somebody yeah. goes off into another room, 
repaints it 15 minutes later comes back and like oh okay yeah that's right that's right you know and fix this or tighten up this joint here here's what we need to change on engineer you know that stuff when you're there in person it goes like this but when it's like send it to me i you can't take a picture of it because if you take a picture of it no telling what you're lighting or this right. and that, then they got to send it via fedex then you have to look at it and it just slows everything down yeah. immensely immensely yeah. Well, um, hopefully that will be something that gets pushed through and then we're going to have that, you know, as cool as it is to get a mountain of toys all at once, I'm sure ideally these things are arriving in a little bit more even course, right? Exactly. It should all be on that sort of four month cadence that we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you run into the same thing is just because China's open as an employer who am I sending there and what liability do I have if I send somebody there? Right. becomes a very interesting question. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what happens if they go to China and get sick on work? Yeah. Like, ooh, ooh. Because mm. it's not a short flight. Right. And and it puts a lot of, you know, the, the pieces of it in perspective um, as far as that goes. But I think that, you know, even though like from a timing perspective, it makes it so that things aren't ideal. I mean, I'm sure you guys have, you know, because you've had to just adapt it um, in ways that you probably never thought um, what, what was going to happen in terms of how to oversee and go through that whole production cycle, right? Yeah, I mean, we've adapted. It still doesn't mean that uh, it's the most efficient by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Uh, it just sort of is. There's no changing it, so that's what it is. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's just interesting, like, the whole thing. Like, normally when we go, somebody goes, they, they go for a week. And then, or, and then you have different people. Or you have some people that go for two or three weeks and some people that go for just a week. But you've kind of constantly always got somebody there. Or, you know, the most time without somebody being there is about a week. So there's always, you know, that way it moves things along faster. I mean, we've had projects in the past just to make sure they were perfect. I remember once, uh, I literally, I flew to Shenzhen. I think the flight, if you go direct to Shenzhen, like you connect through Shanghai, I think it's like 17 hours. Mm -hmm. I flew to Shenzhen. I spent 24 hours in Shenzhen and flew home. Oh, no, 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 sir. <laughs> I, and it was I, actually one of those things where I was like, actually, it wasn't that bad because I could I can actually sleep on the plane now. And I was like, it, you know, it got done what we needed to get done. But in terms of being here, I was really only gone for like three and a half days. And so you're not getting off schedule or sleepy. You just had like an off day while you were there. And then you're just right back on schedule because you weren't gone long enough to screw up all your sleep patterns. That, yeah. that, was, that was extreme and even people here were just like that's cool. well, it's got to get done yeah because mm -hmm. my my first job out of college i lived in japan for a long time and it got to the point where it was like i am not coming home like in the, within the same quarter twice because i can't handle it i can't do it so um turning something around like that in 24 hours it's just whoo I can't imagine. <laughs> the, the Japan thing I've got, you know, I don't have to go like I used to, but I used to go like four or five times a year. And it was like, if I take the 1130 flight out of SFO to Narita, I will be in, uh, in Shibuya by 630. And if I can stay up till 10, and I know where this one pizza place is that I go to first stop then I'll wake up at 4 30 the next day and then I'll I can go wander around and I know like oh here's a 24-hour bookstore and here's of this you can always go to 7-eleven in Japan <laughs> yeah and do that and then by the next day I can sleep in at least till 6 30 and mm -hmm. I had that pretty pretty good uh and then in, but it was the same thing like there was once where, you know, I had that routine and then I was like, no, no, you need to take the 2.30 flight. And it just f f screwed up the whole thing. I yeah. was like, it took me days to get a client. I was like, just wrecked the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Where did you live in in Japan? Uh, for for most of the time when I was there, I lived in Numazu, which is right near Fuji um, mm -hmm. on, on the coast. Uh, but I lived in Tokyo um, for a while and in Osaka for a little while too, because that's where the company was was based out of. So um, I, I wanted to live um, I, 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 in as many diverse places as, as I could because I had the ability to do so because we had locations throughout the country. But I really enjoyed living in Numazu, even though I'd never even like given it a thought or heard of it until I actually lived there. But it was it was a cool town. It was split in split in half by the the, the train station. So. Um, you had to, you had to All buy a are. ticket. You had to buy a ticket to go to the other side of town. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like every town is literally bisected by the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I wanted, it was on the beach. If I wanted to go to beach, I lived on the wrong side of the, the uh, of the train station. <laughs> That's funny. That's uh, funny. But well, um, as always, Brian, thanks so much for joining us. Um, like I said, we may have a chance to catch up. Um, again, before the end of the year with some of the stuff that uh, that, that, that might be popping. So we'll, we'll look forward to that. But there's some really cool stuff right there and right there. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not talking about that stuff yet. These these darn computer screens don't work that way. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, all right. I, you know, there's there's a lot of cool, fun stuff to talk about. And um, I, you know. I feel like, it, you know, somebody's watching this and I'm just like, just kind of, like, oh, yeah, well, it's got a couple guns. And, you know, I feel like at some point I'm, I'm, I'm not selling it enough or being like cool enough. I have no idea. But I don't know. Like these guys, are, these, they're, they're great. I love this stuff. It, it's and, so cool. Yeah. It's so I, cool that we're getting to make it. And never it, had, and, and you've never had Joes like these, you know? No, I've so, never had Joes like these. I mean, look at look at the boots on Lady J. <laughs> yeah, those are pouches on the side. Yeah, the asymmetrical strap. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like like fun 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 times, and um, I'm I'm hoping, and I'm sure everything is doing doing great, and I'm I I can't wait until we're like talking about this like two years from now, and we've lost track of how many figures um have been released at that point, right? Yeah. I think the hardest part is that I just don't have any really great anecdotes on either one of these. Like, oh, I had to go fight a wild bear to get the skin for this one, you know? Well, uh, instead, it's just like, no, we decided to make this person. And yes, the glasses will be clear green. Well, I, I, I love Kyle's anecdote that, you know, he wanted to do King Sphinx right after Goldar because when he was a kid, he thought they were brothers. Works for me. <laughs> you know, I, I'm all for it, Kyle. I'm all for it. Well. Uh, well, um, all right. Well, thank you very much, sir. Um, I, I appreciate the catch up and hope to do it again soon. All right. Yeah, definitely. All right. Thanks, thank, Nick. Thank you very much. And thanks everybody for joining us.